Grace, mercy, and peace to all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the lesson for meditation this morning is the Old Testament lesson read a moment ago from Genesis 32. And our sermon theme today is entitled, Wrestling with God. Dear friends and beloved brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. The Old Testament lesson you heard a little bit ago from Genesis 32 is kind of curious and it might be a little hard to understand. A lot of times the meaning of a Bible passage might be somewhat clear or it could be easily explained and understood, but that's not really the case with today. Today we're told that there is an Old Testament character named Jacob and he gets in a wrestling match with some guy that has huge superhuman strength and the wrestling match goes on all night long. What in the world is God trying to tell us in this passage? Well, first it's helpful to know some context about what had been going on at the time. Jacob is the son of Isaac, and he's the grandson of Abraham. Now, all throughout the Old Testament to this point, all of the characters had been waiting on God to keep the promise that he made that he was sending a Savior. And at this time, the Savior was supposed to be a descendant of Jacob. Now, Jacob was quite the character. His name in Hebrew means heel-grabbing deceiver, deceiver. And that was kind of appropriate because Jacob a lot of times acted in godly ways and sometimes in some not so godly ways. You know, like us. At this time, Jacob was on the run from his much bigger and much powerful older brother Esau because Esau was mad at Jacob because Jacob tricked their father Isaac into giving Jacob the blessing from God that Esau thought he should have gotten. So Esau was coming to meet with Jacob. And Jacob was afraid because he thought Esau was going to kill him. Jacob had been entangled in deception and conflict his whole life. The Bible says that Jacob and Esau, who actually were twins... When they were in their mother's womb before they were born, they were fighting and struggling constantly. Jacob tricked Esau on a couple of different occasions. And Jacob had got caught up in this web of mutual deception with his father-in-law Laban, and that led to a big mess, because that resulted with Jacob having two wives, and the wives were actually sisters, and he also had children with two of their maidservants on top of it all. And so this dysfunction had become a constant source of conflict and struggle. At times, Jacob so showed great signs of faith in God. And at times, he had conducted himself in very ungodly ways, depending on his ability to deceive. Now that is not where God wanted Jacob to be. God was going to work repentance in Jacob's heart by whatever means it took. So seemingly out of left field, God shows up in human form to have this wrestling match with Jacob. Now this wrestling match was not your ordinary wrestling match. It starts out with Jacob wrestling with God... Because Jacob was trying to assert his own control and will for his life and impose that on God. The text says that the match went on all night long. And the man he was wrestling, who actually was God, saw that he was not prevailing over Jacob. Jacob was fighting with ferocious tenacity. Jacob was determined that he was going to win this fight. He wasn't going to stop fighting no matter what. And it, he fought all night long. He simply wouldn't quit. But eventually, Jacob saw the futility of it all because with one simple touch of a finger, God dislocated Jacob's hip. The fight is over that quickly. 
So we see there that God actually was in control of the, the situation the entire time. And the struggle went on so long only because God let it go on that long. Now at this time there was quite a change that happened. Jacob now is no longer struggling with God to assert himself upon God. Instead, he has come to see that God is the one and only source of strength that he has. God tells Jacob to let him go, but Jacob refuses. Jacob clings to God with every ounce of strength that he has because he's come to see that without God's blessings and God's provisions, Jacob has nothing. He begs God to bless him. Jacob is now struggling with God, but this time it's not in a battle of wills, but it's in an act of total desperation. Jacob sees that he needs God so badly that he refuses to let God go away. He remembered God's promise to send a Savior, and he begged God to keep that promise and to bless him. So repentance has been worked in Jacob's heart through the struggle that he endured. Jacob's begging God for his blessing is now where God wants him to be. Now, God's response to all this is also quite telling. God asked Jacob what his name was. And in doing so, because Jacob's name was dominated by deception, God was forcing Jacob to confront himself and to confront his sinful ways. And Jacob stating his name is his confession of his sinfulness before God. So instead of condemning Jacob, which is what Jacob actually deserved, God blessed him. And God not only blessed him, he gave Jacob a new name, which meant that he gave Jacob a new identity. No longer was Jacob to be identified as a heel-grabbing deceiver, but his new name was Israel, which means he has wrestled with God and lives. A complete new standing before God. Jacob was rejoicing that he had seen God's face and yet lived. Usually seeing God face to face meant death because a sinful person can't be in the presence of a holy God. But God allowed Jacob to live this time. God was merciful to Jacob. God allowed Jacob's struggle with him to go on for such a long time, and then at just the right time, God brought Jacob to repentance. God came to Jacob not to kill him, but to save him by strengthening his faith and strengthening repentance in Jacob's heart by whatever means it took. So now God's grace was clear and apparent to Jacob. Now, what about you? Do you ever wrestle with God? Just like Jacob? Are there things that you're afraid of? Or things that you want that aren't in line with what God wants and that causes a struggle between you and God? Is there uncertainty in your employment situation? Are there health concerns that you're dealing with and you're not really sure how things are going to turn out? Are there problems in your relationships that breed uncertainty or hurt in your heart? Are you trying to push through some sort of painful trial that you're going through? Are you preoccupied with the direction that our society and country may take in the future? These are real life struggles that people deal with and they give us actual fear and pain. So, you turn to God. You tell God your concerns. And you wait for Him to answer. But He might not give you the answer that you want in the timing that you want. You want your problems fixed in your way and your timing, but God doesn't give in to your demands. 
So you struggle and wrestle with it. You demand to know why this is happening. You insist to God that your will would be done. You pour out all of the pain and the worry that's in your heart to God and you insist that he does something right now. Just like Jacob, you also wrestle with God. Now Jacob wrestled with God in the physical sense, but you wrestle with God constantly in the spiritual sense. Your wrestling match with God occurs through prayer. In your prayers, you not only thank Him for all of the blessings that you have, you not only praise His holy name, but you cry out to Him in your times of need. You tell Him all of your fears and all of your pains, and you beg Him for His help. You express frustration with him that he won't do it your way. And you demand answers from him in prayer. Now you may not physically see God, but in your prayer life you most certainly wrestle with him. But once again, God's response is very comforting. God wanted Jacob to wrestle with him. And God used that struggle to strengthen Jacob spiritually. God loved Jacob, and God graciously let the struggle go on as opposed to just condemning Jacob. And God responds to you in the exact same way. God wants you to wrestle with him. God wants you to pray to him, and not just about the things that make you happy, God wants you to bring all of the troubles of your heart and your mind to Him in prayer. God wants to hear your frustrations and your fears. God wants you to struggle with Him. Because He will use that struggle for your good. God will build you up through the fight. He's promised He will do so. God never lies. God is faithful, and our text today actually is proof that God does care for and will be merciful to and gracious to you. Now we turn around and ask the question, why in the world would God show us mercy? You're sinful by nature. You question God. You doubt God. You argue with God. You give God your demands. You haven't earned his mercy. You don't deserve it. So why is he going to be so merciful to you? He's going to be merciful to you because he has already punished his son. Jesus was punished in your place. Jesus died and rose to pay for all of your sins. Jesus suffered for your doubts and your fears, and your questions, and your demands of God. Jesus died and he took all of your sins into death with him. The cross and the empty tomb of Jesus has taken your sinfulness out of the, equa out of the equation. It's off the table. In Christ you are forgiven. Your sinfulness is no longer a barrier to God because you have been baptized into the saving death and resurrection of Jesus and he blesses you to receive these blessings through repentance and faith. It happened just a little while ago. It is Jesus that gives you repentance. It's Jesus that gives you faith. He knew you would need those things. So he gave them to you. And it is Jesus that keeps your faith alive and strong in you. Jesus is always at work in you. And he has to be because the devil is also always at work in you, assaulting you, trying to damage and destroy your faith in Jesus. So Jesus comes to your defense. Jesus strengthens your faith in the hearing and the studying of his word in church. 
Jesus strengthens your faith by receiving his body and blood in communion. And Jesus also uses the struggles in life that he allows to come into your life. He uses those also to build you up. Jesus uses your wrestling in prayer to strengthen your faith because he's always faithful. Satan always attacks and Jesus is always there. It was in fact the pre-incarnate Jesus that was the one wrestling with Jacob all night long and Jesus is here with you too. Yeah, it might not seem like it sometimes. When you're in the middle of real problems and struggles, it might appear that God's a million miles away. But he is there in the middle of the struggle. After all, struggle builds character. Struggle builds endurance. And the struggle is there because God is going to use it. So God's message for you this morning is that God invites us to wrestle with him in prayer so that our faiths might be kept strong until Jesus' promised second coming. So embrace the struggle. Because God is faithful, God is with you always, even to the very end of the age. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until his second coming. Amen. We rise for the offertory.